PopOS is one of my favorite distributions and I look forward to every release because they take Ubuntu, a distribution that I already enjoy, and they make it even better for desktop users, and they're doing some awesome things. And in today's video, we are going to review the latest release as of last week, System76 made available version 2010, and in this video, I am going to do a full review. But before I get into that, I want to let you guys know about today's sponsor, which is actually me. I've recently written a book, Mastering Ubuntu Server 3rd Edition. It's going to be released next month, November 2020. It's currently being edited, and I've had a lot of fun writing this book, and I can't wait until you guys get a chance to read it. You can go to UbuntuServerBook.com to pre-order your copy, and once you do get your copy, leave a review somewhere. It would really help me out, and that would be awesome. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into Pop! OS 2010. So here I am with a fresh installation of Pop! OS 2010, all set and ready to go. So let's take a look. Now at first glance, there doesn't appear to be all that much new. So if I was to open up the file manager here, we could notice that there's been some improvements in the theming. I think that everything looks a little bit crisper and cleaner, and I do like the Pop! OS theme quite a bit. But when it all comes down to it, we have a lot of new features, but the odd thing is that all of these features were already released in Pop! OS 2004, and that makes this distribution a little difficult to review because while there are some very exciting things in this release, they were already backported to 2004, and most of us have already experienced these new tweaks and additions. So first of all, the main highlight here is GNOME 3.38. GNOME 3.38 is not something that's going to be backported to Pop! OS 2004 in the future, unless there's some kind of magic that the developers of Pop! OS are planning on implementing. Now, GNOME 3.38 constitutes the desktop environment, and that release of GNOME itself is a little boring when it comes to new features. Now, a few of the features that you will notice in the new version of GNOME is here on the applications grid. So if we have a few applications that are related in some way, what we can do is combine them into folders. So for example, I can drag this icon onto this one, and that creates a folder, and then I can give that folder a name, as I'm doing here. But what's also cool is I can rearrange the order of the icons here in the applications grid as well. Now the folks at System76, they have already done some organization here. As you can see, we have a system section, which is where they put the NVIDIA settings, language settings, system monitor, and things like that. We also have an office section here for all the office applications. So I can see that the developers at System76 that make Pop! OS are making full use of this new feature in the newest version of GNOME. Now, most of the new features in GNOME are relatively minor. The changes are all welcome, but there's nothing in the new version of GNOME that is going to really excite anyone. Now, some examples of that include the ability in settings. If I go there and then go into the power section and then scroll down, we now have the ability to show the percentage of the remaining battery life on the panel at the top of the screen by enabling that here. And now you can see at the top right corner, it shows us the percentage of remaining battery. Now that's not actually a new feature. We've been able to do that for several releases now. It's just that this option was not in settings before. It was a bit harder to get to in the past. But now it's very easy to get to because it's right here in the settings. And I think that's pretty cool for those of you that prefer to see the battery life percentage in the bar. And I'm one of those people, so I welcome that change. Up here at the top of the screen, is where we see our notifications. We have a notification right here that is telling me that there's some updates available. But on the right hand side, we have a separate section for notifications that are related to calendar events right underneath the calendar, which is where you can argue they should have been in the first place. Now in the past, you would have your calendar notifications here with the normal system notifications, which means that alerts that are for calendar events might get buried in all the other alerts but now they'll be separated here on the right, which is also a welcome change. 
So there's actually other improvements in GNOME 3.38 as well, but you know, they're all very minor changes in my opinion and nothing that's really going to excite anyone. I think that the most important change in GNOME 3.38 is going to be the performance improvements in the new version, but they have been working hard on performance improvements in pretty much every version of GNOME for one to two years now or more. So I don't think that I need to always mention that there's performance improvements because they're always working on that. On my end, I am running on a ThinkPad X1 Extreme at the moment, which is a pretty fast laptop, so I'm not really going to notice this as much as other people might. But if you do have a feeling that your current machine is running a bit slow, maybe the new performance tweaking might give your machine a new lease on life. Let me know in the comments below if you have tried Pop! OS 2010 and you've noticed that it runs faster than previous releases. Now, when it comes to features that are specific to Pop! OS, that's where this review becomes a little challenging because if you were to look at the list of new features here, I think you'd probably be impressed. You know, auto tiling, for example, there's improvements with uh, monitors, we could do fractional scaling and a number of other improvements, but all of those improvements were already backported to Pop! OS 2004 so they aren't really so much a benefit of 2010 because you will get those features regardless of whether or not you upgrade to 2010. Now GNOME 3.38 and the performance tweaks that that gives us will not be backported as far as I know, but all of the other features already have been backported to 2004 even before 2010 even came out. So let's take a look at some of the new features because some of the features that I'm going to go over are actually new as of the previous release. Now, Pop! OS 2004 was the first release that gave us auto tiling, and we've had that for a while. It's a feature that I can't live without. I just love it. Now, the difference is if we were to, let's just open up a few applications here at random. The difference is that if we have tiling enabled, then everything is going to be, well, tiled. Every time we open a new application, it's going to be tiled along with the rest, as you can see here. And there's keyboard shortcuts that will simplify the process a bit. So if I click View All right here, and get rid of a few of these so we can actually see it, you can see some of the shortcuts that are available to enable or disable tiling to begin with. And then some other things that we could do, like move the tiles around, change the size of each individual tile, and so on. And what you'll also see here is that we have an application launcher by pressing super and then slash. And this is what the application launcher looks like. You can start typing the name of an application, and it'll show it here. You just press enter, and then that application will launch, which is a very, very awesome thing to have available. And I love that quite a bit. Now, none of this so far is new in 2010. And you can argue that some of the things that are new in 2010 aren't even new to 2010 because Pop! OS is somewhat of a rolling release. It isn't a rolling release in the normal definition of a rolling distro, but they do continually backport changes to the previous versions. So a lot of these things are not going to be new to anyone. So let's take a look at the tab stacks feature that I think is a really awesome feature here. So I'm just going to open a few random applications here. And now we have two. So if I choose a window and then I hold the super key and press S, you can see that a bar appeared at the top right here. So what I could do is actually move an application into the tab stack by just dragging it over. And you can see that they now share the same space on the screen. Now what this allows us to do is benefit from tiling on a display that is small and normally not great for tiling. Tiling is usually really awesome when you have a super high resolution display or one of those ultra wide displays. That's where tiling really shines. But when you have a 1080p panel, for example, or just a standard 16x9 panel, you do lose a little bit of the benefit of tiling, but tab stacks will actually give you that benefit as you can see right here, I can actually have both of these applications in the same stack. But one aspect of tiling that's a little weird is that some applications, they just don't really look good when tiled. Now as you can see, this looks really weird. 
Now normally when you don't have tiling enabled, I'll just go ahead and disable it. And I think this is reasonable because we don't need the calculator to take up the entire screen. So if I was to maximize it, for example, you see the same problem. So some applications just don't work well with tiling. So what we can actually do with this new version is when tiling is enabled, we can click on the tiling menu here again and then click on floating window exceptions. Now what I'll do is click select and then I will select the calculator right here. And then I will choose the option for this app's windows. And we can see that it automatically went to its smaller size. And now even with tiling enabled, I'll just go ahead and close out of everything here. And I will open up another app as well. And then I will open up calculator. You can see that it is a floating window. And from time to time, you'll probably run into an application that doesn't work well when it comes to tiling. But it's awesome that now you can go ahead and add an exception to make sure that that particular application does not open in tiled mode. And I think that's a very welcome feature to add. Now another feature that is also new, and I'll disable tiling for now. If I go to settings, and then I'll scroll down and then in displays, we actually have support for fractional scaling as it shows right here. Now I'm not going to enable that because the screen recorder that I'm using to capture the footage right now is very finicky and I'm not trying to tempt fate and corrupt the recording or anything like that. But as you can see, there might be some concerns with lower speed or losing some display sharpness, but we do have the option for fractional scaling if that's something that you want to see. And what that will allow you to do is basically scale in between these main numbers right here. I have it on 200% right now, but effectively that would allow me to go to 150% rather than straight to 200. Now this isn't entirely a new feature because Ubuntu had this feature with 2004 when it first launched, but actually there were some issues with fractional scaling and the Pop! OS developers disabled that actually, but now they have enabled it. But they have also backported this change to 2004 as well, so even if you don't upgrade to 2010, you will still have access to this feature. When I reviewed Ubuntu 2010, I was very disappointed in the performance of games. In my tests, anything that requires a GPU just ran like garbage. The lagginess made the games that I tried utterly unplayable. Since Pop! OS shares the same base, I was a bit nervous going into this review because I thought that maybe the same flaw would carry over into Pop! OS 2010, but I was pleasantly surprised when I tried Portal 2, for example, it runs great. And this is the same exact machine that I reviewed Ubuntu 2010 on. Out of the box, it fails on Ubuntu, and it's perfectly fine on Pop! OS, so score one for Pop! OS. I guess it's not all that surprising because System76 takes gaming very seriously, and they put a lot of work into their distribution to ensure that games work fine for their users. So I guess this is just another example of that. But regardless, this is an example where Pop! OS shines over Ubuntu, and if you play games, then I highly recommend Pop! OS over Ubuntu. And remember, testing is the future, and the future starts with you. Overall, I'm very pleased with Pop! OS 2010. I think it's a great release. But honestly, it was a bit of a challenge to review because it actually suffers from the same problem that Ubuntu 2010 suffers from. To give you a little background, Ubuntu 2004 is an LTS release. You get up to five years of support for security updates. And with non-LTS releases, you only get about nine months. And what that means is, if you upgrade from 2004 to 2010, you are losing out on several years of support. So in order for me to recommend that you guys upgrade off of an LTS release, I feel like there needs to be features in the new version that are so awesome that it just doesn't even make sense to not upgrade. But Ubuntu 2010, it has some new features, but nothing great, nothing that stands out. There's just no reason to upgrade whatsoever, and Ubuntu 2010 should be avoided. And Pop! OS kind of has the same problem because all of the new features in Pop! OS 2010 were already backported to 2004, so you could run 2004 today with all of the new features that are advertised in the release notes for 2010. Now the difference between a new version of Ubuntu and a new version of Pop! OS 
is that a new Ubuntu release is completely frozen, it's final, and a new release of Pop! OS is a new beginning. Ubuntu 2010 will see no new features, beyond, you know, the occasional Firefox update or something like that. The state of Ubuntu 2010 today is going to be the same state as it will be when it reaches end of life. There's going to be no new features, it's not going to change, whereas a new version of Pop! OS, in this case Pop! OS 2010, is a new beginning, meaning that they're going to sync all of the changes that were made to 2004 so far, include those changes in 2010, and then use 2010 as a new base to build new features on top of. So while I don't recommend that users of Ubuntu 2004 update to 2010, I do recommend that users of Pop! OS 2004 at least give 2010 a look. I'm not saying that you should definitely upgrade to Pop! OS 2010 immediately, but you should definitely consider it because again, there's no new features, at least not yet. But if you do upgrade to Pop! OS 2010, then you will receive new features whenever they come available. And I'm very interested to see what Pop! OS 2010 looks like, you know, a couple months from now. I'm very excited to see what's going to come along. But as it stands today, Pop! OS 2010 is a good release. It is worth consideration. And if you are not running Pop! OS at all, then you should definitely start with Pop! OS 2010 because it is a great distribution and they've put a lot of work into it. So what do you think about Pop! OS 2010? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I will see you again real soon. Stay tuned.